Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome to Adorama TV. My name is Seth Miranda and this, well, this is something you've probably been waiting for or you've been out there looking for the Fujifilm X100V. And this is the X106VI, the sixth evolution of the X100 series that all us photo nerds have known and loved for a long time. And then the rest of the world found out about it and it went everywhere. And you've probably been a hard time trying to find the fifth rendition, the X100V. So now we know what Fujifilm was up to. They were putting out a whole new version. This, if I had to give you the elevator pitch on this, Think about the X-T5 crammed into the X100V. And if you understand what the X100 series is about, uh, and if you don't, check out the link down below because we have the X100V video there, which we talk about a lot of the legacy features that have always been in this series of cameras that we don't think were talked out enough. And I think you'll get an understanding of what this camera is really about. But this right here, we get a bunch of boosts in a lot of different places. First of all, it's super familiar. You've got yourself physically the same camera pretty much as the X100V. So all the things, all the outside, all the buttons, everything, the flip screen, the lens, all that stuff, same, right? You got a 23 millimeter F2 lens here, nice little pancake lens with the leaf shutter and the four stop ND filter in there, which I'm gonna get into in a little bit because that's like a really nice feature to have, especially with what they've done with this camera uh, in general, as far as the updates go. But what else, what changed on here? So the sensor, right away, you're getting a 40 megapixel sensor in here with IBIS, mechanical stabilization. That means you can shoot at slower shutter speeds and not worry about getting camera shakes so much. And for a lot of street shooters, especially in lower light situations, or if you wanna show motion on the street and you want your camera being stable, IBIS can save your life there. And a lot of you I know have been waiting for that feature to hit the X100 series. Well, you've got it right here in the X100 VI. I'm gonna say VI, cause I feel like that's really what it is, but they're probably gonna call it the X106. Just be aware of that. The other thing that you're gonna see that happen in here is you get the processing power. And with that processing power, you also get the subject recognition that they've been putting into their newer series of cameras. That means before we were only getting human and eye in the X100V and so forth, now going forward with this camera, you've got subject detection for people, but also animals, trains, planes, birds, motorcycles. I mean, it's just got a nice list of subject detection for you to really focus in on, no pun intended, on whatever you're shooting out there, which is cool. So if you really are someone that leans on that type of technology, you've got it right here in this awesome camera. And the thing that you're going to realize is that really quickly, it makes you shoot different, right? Because you still got all the stuff that happens inside the X100 series, that rangefinder feel. You can shoot the OVF, optical viewfinder, but you've got the, the hybrid uh, viewfinder that's known for where I can make it the EVF where I'm shooting to the sensor instead of shooting through a lens. Or if you're like, I don't know which way I wanna shoot, you can do what I do and do the hybrid where you're shooting optical in the lower right corner. You can see what the image is gonna be off the sensor. And the reason I do this so much is because I tend to lean a lot on black and white when I pick up this camera. I don't know why it is, there's something about it. I'm sure each one of you that have shot this series of cameras has your own habits and how it shifts over, especially with someone like me that works professionally, shoots a lot of clean commercial stuff. There's specific ways you do things and you strive for, and then you just need a palette cleanser and this is kind of it. So when I'm shooting grayscale, I can shoot with the rangefinder field through the OVF and then in the lower corner, I can check my tones, check my contrast, see what's really happening for the image before it comes out of the camera, which is awesome. And I've always been a fan of the way Fujifilm not only does color, but grayscale and, and tones in general. The one thing that is really cool about shooting grayscale on this camera that isn't anything new is you have highlight and shadow tone curve that you can mess with. So hang with me on this one. A lot of the times I, yes, you shoot raw files, but I'm kind of slinging JPEGs a lot of this camera because I'm, I'm trying to make this like my fun, I shot it, it's over with type camera if that makes any sense to you guys. So with the highlight and shadow tone curve, you, I can pull down my shadows like I like to do and push up my highlights like I like to do to get that contrast, but that heavy weight in my shadows that I like to do so much. So when I'm walking around the city, I'm getting it basically how I want it and it's done. I don't even have to think about some post-processing too much. And I got the shot that I'm looking for is if I'm shooting black and white the way I would shoot black and white, if that makes any sense to you you guys. However, another thing that you might not know is that in Capture One, the raw files for Fuji film, they hold the film simulation you choose. So let's say you're using what I use a lot, which is Acros with the yellow filter simulated in there. And when you go to the raw file, it's sitting there as a raw file in that film simulation already. And if you want to, and you say, you know, I really wish I shot this in color or something like that, you can go into the rest of the film simulations in Capture One and take that raw file right back to that. You can do Fujifilm Velvia with some really punchy, vivid colors, or you can do Provia, or in this camera, you actually get Reala Ace, which is awesome. If you don't know what Reala Ace is, 
I have the GFX 102 and that has it in there. And based on my opinion and, and experience shooting with it, I feel it's one of these film simulations that's way more true to life color. If you're trying to get accurate, like that's what you're gonna lean into is Reala Ace. If that makes any sense, like throw up a chipboard, you'll basically see those colors in that screen. Does that make sense to you guys? Hope it does, but it's really cool that's an option here because a lot of times I shoot for brands and they wanna see like that color to be accurately represented. I can do that, right? But. Just so you know, I can only shoot JPEGs on this because it's a pre-production model, which is fine. Like I said, I had those highlight and shadow tone curves to get the black and white how I want in camera, which is awesome. And I tend to shoot that way anyway. And like I said, everything on this camera is very, very familiar because it's basically what you know if you're in the X100 series ever, it's the same thing going on here. So as far as the film simulations go, I jumped out on the balcony with Cadence and did a quick shoot. Now I gotta tell you, I kind of geared up for this one. I was like, let me get a strobe just in case. I don't know what I'm gonna go. And I, I scrapped it right away. It was kind of nuts. Let me explain what happened here because in the X100V video we did when that one came out, I threw a strobe on a stand with an umbrella and I think after watching that video, I was like, you know what, that's a lot of stuff. If I want to go that way, I can. I can build up, throw a remote in the shoe, and you can, you know, use your systems and do bigger things with it. But I kind of wanted to, for this one, really shoot nice and light. So went out on that balcony, overcast day. She looks amazing. She's got that red hair. She's got this like emerald green satiny thing going on. And at first I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go shoot black and white like I always do with this camera. And really quickly I got out of shooting black and white because the colors looked so cool. And I'm looking at her in this overcast day and I'm shooting her, it started out in Provia, tried Riala Ace just to see the difference back and forth. And you're getting this like overhead type look on her with the lighting because that's what it is. It was middle of the day, even though it's overcast, it's still overhead and you're getting like raccoon eyes, you're getting dense shadows. And unless you constantly put her face up to the light, you're gonna get some heavy shadows. So I was thinking, man, let me try the on-camera strobe. I know, I know, I tried this little tiny flash right here above the lens, as close to the lens you probably can get. And all I did was throw it in TTL, drop it down minus one and two thirds stop and watched my distance to her a little bit. And it just kind of filled in the shadows enough. When you look at the shots side by side, strobe and no strobe, you can tell that there was a strobe absolutely used. But if I just showed you just the strobe photo without any other option, you think it's pretty nice because Cadence was going, I like that one more. It definitely has that direct on access fill light look to it where you kind of smooth out skin. You don't change the shadow patterns too much, but it's a really nice option to have out there. And don't forget, this is a leaf shutter, which means I can boost my shutter speed up to 2,000th of a second and not have to worry about it. And the high speed sync doesn't have to kick in here for uh, um, off camera strobe either, because you've got that leaf shutter, which is another great thing about the X100 series. Another thing you get on this is the ability to add a teleconverter lens, which means I can screw on a lens and go from the 23 millimeter F2 to more of a nifty 50 type look. So if you want to get that little bit of portraiture type feel where you're kind of separating them a little bit more, getting in there a little bit tighter, you can. And it's an optional accessory, but it's an awesome option to have. And I've been using it since the X100F, I think, and it's still great. I really enjoy it. And because it's geared for this, your framing lines and your OVF will change based on knowing that the teleconverter is on there because it goes from 23 to 50, so the, the field of view changes, obviously. Anyway, very cool accessory to add on there. Of course, you also have the wide angle adapter as well if you want to go that route. I've been sticking to the telephoto. I feel like the 23 is wide enough without getting too crazy. That said, you've got a lot of examples with the shoe with Cadence. You've got the film simulations, you've got the teleconverter, and you've got the strobe, no strobe. And I think you can get a sense of what this camera really delivers for you out there. Of course, I had to walk around New York with this camera and just kind of shoot around because that's kind of what I do with this camera when I use my X100V. And of course I kept it in grayscale and I just kept shooting around. Few places I saw some very amazing color with the graffiti here in New York, how could you not? And I switched over to Velvia or Provia and just grabbed some quick shots so you can see that snappiness of all that color. But keeping it in grayscale is kind of where I, I always lean on it and, I, and old habits die hard, right? So walking around very discreet. But one of the things that's really, really cool about this is that you have a stabilized sensor, right? So you've got a 40 megapixel sensor that stabilized, lets you shoot slower shutter speeds to get that shutter drag. You can even open up the F2, keep it nice and shallow if you wanna get that look. All those things, and then you're gonna say, oh, wait a second, now I'm overexposed. No, you're not. 
Tap a button and you've got a mechanical four stop ND filter to knock all that light back out. So you get the look and type of shot with the shutter drag and shallow look, and then you're able to get back to exposure, which is great. It's an amazing option to have, and it's definitely better to work within camera for things like that, because you're not gonna create things like shutter drag and post. You're just not. So things like that are really amazing. And don't forget, with 40 megapixel and the stabilization, you're able to kind of slow your shutter down more than you would think, just so that you could ease up on that ISO. So if you're someone that's worried about noise uh, because of higher resolution, you can always remember that you're okay for as far as camera shake goes. And I did a lot of this stuff. If you look at some of these shots, I was on the train and a lot of things, I don't know why I do this, maybe it's because I grew up here in New York, but I always shoot through the windows of the train and try to get like signs or benches or something through moving trains. I don't know why I like that shot and I'll take it a million more times in my life, even if it's the same shot. But I'm able to do that because I'm stabilized. I was going down to about a 15th of a second, sometimes an eighth of a second. And I was getting that train moving, but keeping the sign really nice and sharp and stable. Great, right? And then walking around the city, I had to, you know, get the steam from the sewer lid or the legacy uh, businesses that are here, like the old delis and stuff like that, that have like been here since 1940, whatever. You get that nice look and it's definitely the way you shoot with this camera because it's lightweight, it's small, it's discreet. It's kind of like you're working fast, you're grabbing, you're observing more, if that makes any sense. And I think anyone that shoots out there can, can kind of agree that the type of gear you're using will definitely change the habits of the way you're shooting. So you kind of pick up that tool for the way you want to shoot that day, does that make sense? And I feel like that's kind of what you get out of this camera. If you're new to this series, that's kind of the vibe I would tell you about this. So you're getting, the feel of the X100 series. You're getting that rangefinder-ish type shooting style, and you're also getting all that technology from the X-T5 crammed into this thing. It's awesome. Of course, everything stays similar. If you're in the X100 series, you get the same battery. You're using SD memory. You're using USB-C ports, and you can charge in-body, which is great, because when you travel with this thing, you, it's nice to carry light, just one cable, and you can, you can charge it. I've been charging it from my laptop uh, power supply. So I'm only carrying one thing that's USB-C to plug in and you're just kind of good to go. And I've been having a lot of good time with this thing, but just so you guys know, it's not just for stills. Yeah, you're looking at 6.2K video in this thing. I'm talking 4K 60. If you want to shoot video with this, you can. So if you're going on a trip and you want to be lightweight or you're just hanging out there and with a significant other and you just want to shoot and get some quick clips, you can and know that you're getting all that resolution and getting all that video quality, plus throw in an ND filter on the fly instead of having to like screw it on, screw it off, spin it. If you want to knock out four stops, live your dream. Knock out four stops, you know what I mean? And also, it's stabilized. You're doing video, you're gonna want that footage to be stable, right? So while it is a small camera and while you can throw it on a gimbal, you if you just wanna carry this, you can, which is kinda why I look at it like a Swiss Army camera, right? It has all these features that let you do so many versatile things in a photo nerd way. From the leaf shutter, the, the built-in the filter, the, the hybrid viewfinder, if you wanna shoot optical or EVF, you have that option. You can really make it your camera, which is great. One of the things I do wanna kinda let you guys know about is the Fujifilm app is awesome. So let's say you take this camera and you hand it to somebody or you give it to someone that, uh, you know, a life partner and they change all the settings on you, take it back and you go, what, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Go into your Fujifilm app, your settings are saved there and you can put them right back to where they were, which is great, especially if you're someone that kind of like shares cameras with somebody or something like that. Or maybe you want to try a completely different setup. You can go back to the one you liked more because you saved it. Definitely cool. If you're in the Fujifilm system and you haven't checked out the new app, go ahead and check out that app, seriously. So if you haven't noticed the trend of this video, we've been talking about the X-T5 being like inside this X100 VI. And one of the things that the X-T5 has been known for was shooting the cloud. You can shoot and go right into a Frame.io workspace in real time. So if you're someone that shoots events and you're in the Fujifilm system and you're shooting to Frame.io on some other camera that they got in this lineup and you like the X100 series and you like the candid feel of it, you like that small, it's discreet, you're getting different types of shots or you just like the camera in general or it's your second camera, whatever it is, you still be able to shoot the frame IO. Yeah, so you can shoot in real time if you have someone that's editing or working in frame IO and wants those shots right here. And it's nice to see the frame IO thing that Fujifilm has been putting out there and they've been sticking to it, right? Like it hasn't just been in one camera body or it was like a gimmick. No, they're really making a thing out of this and it's just nice to see it here in the uh, X100 VI. 
As far as frames per second go, you kind of got the same thing that's been going on. It goes up to 20 frames per second, but that's only electronic shutter and that is cropped. However, I've been keeping it on six frames per second, which is the fastest it seems to go with mechanical shutter, which is kind of where I wanted to keep things. But if you wanted to go into eight, 13, whatever else, it's electronic shutter. Just make sure you read the asterisk on what caveats might be there the faster you go in frame rate. Because I got this comment on the X100V video, the fastest shutter speed on this is one four thousandth of a second. So if you're worried about that or you wanna know what it is, there's your limit. And it goes up to 12,800 as far as ISO goes. Walk around in New York, it's never boring, right? And growing up here, I kinda of get kind of numb to it and I kind of forget that there's a lot of cool things here and I kind of walk past them and just forget about them. Something about picking up the Fujifilm X100 series makes me stop for a second and observe stuff like the old school stores that have been here forever and getting their storefront shot or the famous Cat's Deli that I walk past every day. But then when you go to capture it, you're kind of like, huh, how could I share what I see every day with everybody? It kind of slows you down like that. And of course, all the graffiti, which is, you know, something that I'm always constantly aware of. And I, I feel like the streets are talking and you can really read what's going on out there with the graffiti. And uh, you can see it in, in a lot of these shots, I feel. And you can see where like, you know, the buildings have been abandoned for a little while or stru storefronts haven't been there for a minute and that's where the graffiti hits and it goes back into being clean buildings again. I hope you guys are getting that sense from these shots or the steam from the sewers coming up in the financial district and you get a sense of how cold it's been here for the week that we've been shooting with this camera. Or maybe I go into the retro video game store and I get to see this old crazy wall of old school Nintendo cartridges, but because I got the resolution, I can read every one of those titles. I can read all the price tags on there. I have the ability to do so because the resolution is just sitting there for me inside the X106. And I think resolution is a great thing to have when you're shooting street, because you know, always after the fact, you kind of notice secondary moments that might've been on a corner of a frame or the side of a frame, and maybe you shoot a little wider or you're shooting from the hip and then you go check it later and you kind of make your composition a little bit tighter later after the fact, you've got 40 megapixels here to do that with and mix that with the stabilization is just great. It really is. I, I was wondering what they would do to the X100 series to go anywhere from where they were on the X100V and they totally stepped it up on this one as far as inside the body of this thing with the processor, the new focusing, the video features. I'm talking uh, the new film simulations. You're talking resolution, the stabilization. I mean, there's a lot of things to like about what they updated and upgraded in the X100 VI. And if you're a fan of any of the X100 series, like we are here, because I think me and Fernando have been shooting this series since like the beginning, I, we're totally feeling this thing. So if you guys have any questions for me about my experience with the X100 VI or the X106, I'm still debating which, which way to call this thing. Uh, let me know in the comment down below. I'll do my best to answer it. Uh, but for now, if you guys want to know any of the deep dive on some features that have been a legacy in this, check out the link to the X100V video down below as well. It's a quick watch, but it'll give you a sense of what's going on and you'll see a setup with off-camera flash as well. So it gives you a nice baseline. But my name is Seth Miranda, last ex-witness on all social. Don't forget to hit like, share this around, and hit subscribe if it's your first time here. We drop videos like this every single day and I'll see you next time. Later.